This is the pre-meeting of the Mobile City Council, Tuesday, June 15th. We have appeals. We have requests for a waiver of the noise ordinance on June the 18th in Langen Park from 2 p.m. until 7 p.m. On August the 8th from 5 uh, p.m. until 7.30. This is at the Tomaville Crichton Community Development Corporation. No, at the uh, Cooper Riverside Park, excuse me. On June 19th from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. This is in Municipal Park. July 17th from 1 p.m. until 10 p.m. This is on Riverside Drive. July 22nd from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. in Cooper Riverside Park. And June 19th from 3 p.m. until 10 p.m. And this is on South Conception Street. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. Um, we have Jennifer um, Truly, and uh, she is with the uh, Tunnel to Towers Foundation. It should be here. Sorry, uh, both Jennifer and Ed Murphy will give a short presentation on um, bringing Tunnel to Towers back to Mobile. Oh, okay. um, amazing program. Yeah. And if the administration needs some more information on that, they can work through me to get to them. Thank you. Okay. It's great. All right. Oh, um, this Jennifer and Ed Murphy uh, together. Yes. Uh, Daniel Henderson uh, regarding uh, demolition of buildings at 1040 Dolphin Island Parkway. Kenny Owen regarding um, there are no speed bumps on Mohawk Street. Uh, Wesley Young, uh, issues and concerns as it relates to the mobile public service employees. And he has three questions, inability of the city to provide vehicles for employees, inability to hire needed employee, wants to be clear, wants to clear the record on what has been publicly stated about backlog in public works. And um, Reggie Hill, I don't see he is in here. It's, it's got to bring up. Okay. Resolution for Mr. Uh, President. Mr. Vice President. Yeah, uh, Mr. Daniel Henderson. Um, if Mr. Dockerbach can just talk about this for a, a little while, uh, he's coming down here speaking, um, just to give us a little history of it. But he's coming down to speak about um, apartments that we declared a nuisance. Um, couple months ago and the apartment is very is a nuisance um, every week um, I get a porch about citizens um, talk about these apartments on DIP uh, which is right across from Bishop State um, every week I just get complaints so I believe that he may be coming down to try to stop the progress or not too sure exactly what you know but I think Mr. Dockenbach probably just, just just tell us a little bit before he come down here at 10:30, Mr. Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Dolphin. Hey, good morning. Just to, to briefly summarize that, yeah, this is Dolphin Creek Apartments, uh, just south of Hotel Street, and uh, you are correct that there's several units. And what has happened already is, we've municipal enforcement has identified several units that are in bad shape. Some of these have been burned. Some of them are in the point where some demolition has occurred from the property owner, where the framing just exists. And some of them are just in bad shape altogether. We have tires dumped on the site, high grass and weeds. General um, disrepair where the owners of the property have not maintained them for going on three to four years <clears throat> that, that we've all seen. But on the flip side, in the back part, the, this site has six total parcels. The back side of the property towards the creek has, has been renovated and those are occupied. And that's not part of the nuisance abatement that came before the city council, uh, which they have been declared a public nuisance and municipal enforcement is moving forward with the process to demolish those that are in the middle that are in the worst shape. So you're correct that Mr. Henderson is probably gonna come down and address what has already happened where these um, units or these buildings have been declared a public nuisance. And right now we're looking at about 40 units that were declared that we're looking at demolishing. So this is a large site on three different parcels. 
And because of the size, the, the, this is a large project for demolition for the city. And our, our project manager, Gary Jackson, who's an architect, is, is overseeing this and working with ADEM, which has required that this site be tested for asbestos. And it has been found to have asbestos, so we are incorporating that asbestos abatement into the demolition plan. And that's where we're at right now. Um, the, also, in addition to that, the, the size of the, the project <coughs> does require a land disturbing permit. So the city has engaged the engineering services of Dorsey and Dorsey. We have submitted a land disturbing packet that has been approved. So we have a land disturbing permit for this project issued. We're going forward with the on-site uh, pre-bid meeting which will include the language of the scope to abate the asbestos first. And then the second part, once the asbestos is removed from the buildings, will be to, be to go forward with the demolition. And that's where the city is today, and we expect that process in the next couple of weeks to go forward with another on-site meeting, mandatory bid meeting, for the, the general contractors that would be interested. And yes, because this project is a larger project, it does require a general contractor to oversee the, this, this project. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. And again, um, pretty much it's out of our hands. It's totally administrative. But I just want to bring the councilors up to speed exactly what's going on uh, with this particular situation. It's actually a pause in the community and everything. But thank you so much, Mr. Okay. Dr. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Madam City Clerk. Okay. Um, Reggie Hill is uh, wants to address the council on the UDC recommendations, disbursement of public purpose. Um, funds available resources for families in underserved communities. Resolutions held over 08435 approved purchase order to <coughs> Dennis Aluminum Products for 50 decorative aluminum signposts. 09436 allocate funds to capital project traffic, traffic signal generators. 21437 authorized service contract with SNO Enterprises for security and fire alarm monitoring at various city facilities. 21438, authorized contract with SC Stagner, contracting for fire station number 16, concrete apron, uh, apron replacement. Consent resolutions being introduced, 46440, uh, give South Thomas Ave Dr. Thomas, South Dr. Thomas Avenue the honorary designation of Greater Pine Grove Way. 6441442 are determining appropriations to bear a women's coalition and Sandtown. Oh, we're um, tabling that one. Um, yeah. That the Bear Women's Coalition serves a public purpose and approved payment. Mr. Chair? Ms. Gregor? Just so that if anybody's going along with us on the agenda on the um, discretionary appropriation for Sandtown. Uh, the group has uh, asked me if I would just pay for it directly out of my discretionary funds rather than giving them the, the funding. So we're, that's why we're taking it off the agenda. So we're gonna table that one. Yeah, just table it. Resolutions being introduced for the first time. 08443, approved purchase order to Beard Equipment Company for two mowers for the Azalea City Golf Course, $40,688. 08444 approve item based bids for recreational items for the recreation department. 08445 approve purchase order for unleaded fuel for various locations. 08446 approve purchase order to coblets equipment and parts for slope mower for motor pool $193,620. 08447 approved purchase order to Samsung equipment for repairs to garbage truck lifting arm $18,591.71. 08448 approved purchase order to CDW government for network switches and power supplies for information technology $16,455.86. 449 approved purchase order to UAV Survey LLC for add on equipment for enhancement of existing UAV survey equipment for the police cyber division, $91,595. 08450 approved purchase order to um, Gladiator Forensics for annual license renewal for forensic software for the police cyber, cyber division, 16000 
09451 reallocate 100,000 from the police department operating account to the capital improvement fund for the purchase of furnishings for the new police precinct on DIP. 09452 allocate 2,129,000 from the stormwater fund to various stormwater management projects. 21453 authorized contract with Renisha Jones for cyber specialist services in the Gulf Coast Technology Center, 45,000. 21454 authorized contract with Elena Oger, Oger for cyber specialist <coughs> services in the Gulf Coast Technology Center, 45,000 per year. 35455 authorized lease agreement with the Parkway Center for Mobile Police First Precinct. Well, Mr. President. Mr. Vice President. Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to um, say that um, this was a, is a great um, thing for the citizens, especially um, along um, Dolphin Island Parkway, the north end and the south end. Uh, when I first took counsel, uh, many people had, was talking about we want a police precinct, we want a police precinct, we want a police precinct, on and on and on. <clears throat> And um, pretty much um, this is, you know, times that, you know, people will call for policemen, especially on the south end of DIP, and there won't be but like one car um, down that, you know, way. And then if there is something that's going on in RV or another part of the uh, precinct area, um, you know, DIP, as you know, do not have no policemen whatsoever. Um, where this is centrally located um, in the heart of uh, Precinct 1 and also in District 3 uh, will give the um, opportunity for officers to really just drive up and down um, Dolphin Island Parkway, which I've been missing for many, 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 many years. And um, people constantly use DIP as a speedway because they know there's no officers around. But um, if this go forth and everything, this will be a great thing for increase of uh, police presence <laughs> along Dolphin Island Parkway. Um, also, you know, with this, you know, will be um, great because it has uh, classrooms where the now we only have two academies, I believe, um, present. And uh, but this will allow us to have three academies, you know, a year, if I'm not mistaken. And um, pretty much you know, having three academies a year, that means more police officers within our city um, and, you know, more protection within our city. You know, um, you know, it was criticized, you know, by one of the colleagues that, you know, um, you know, that it was pretty much um, brought out before the public, before it actually came to, I guess, pre-council and et cetera. But the uh, only thing I have to say is behind that is that, you know, when you have great news, sometimes you just cannot hold it. You got to just tell it, you know, exactly, you know, what's going on. And, you know, and one of our colleagues had criticized the mayor and said that it was pretty much being disrespectful. But the mayor did acknowledge um, the council at the um, announcement on last week. Uh, when I first heard about the um, announcement that it was going to take place on last Thursday, you know, the first thing I heard the uh, chief of staff, Barbara, said that, you know, usually it's like a ceremony signing. You know, she said back of a piece of paper that they usually sign on it. And so uh, pretty much even though I did not see what was signed, oh, it could have been Scooby-Doo all I know. But I will say that the mayor did not disrespect. He did acknowledge the council. And um, pretty she much I wanted to want to play this into her um, she said by law only the council can vote what to the mayor has said agreement, and then the mayor should sign the paperwork Who's she said it? his actions yesterday were quote totally inappropriate and in any council as irrelevant and bypasses the council's from? legislative authority in a statement to NBC 15 News Mayor Stimson said he is as perplexed as he is dismayed at Councilwoman Rich saying he made it clear it was a ceremonial signing. So subject to city council approval, it's a done deal. But and again, oh, I see where it's coming and from. And again, the mayor oh, said subject to city council approval. You know, you know, then it would be a done deal. So the <coughs> council has not uh, approved this. And again, the mayor did acknowledge the council and say subject to city council approval. 
Um, again, um, I, you know, I thank the administration for bringing this forth, you know, and uh, if it goes through, it goes through. If it don't, it doesn't. But again, this is designed to protect the citizens, not just only District 3, not just for Precinct 1, but for the city of Mobile to gain more um, academies so we can have more police officers here in the city of Mobile. Thank you, Mr. President. If I could comment. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Ms. Rich. Thank you. I was gonna, I was gonna do this when it was an agenda item, but I'll, I was sort of prepared. In 1984, the Zogby Bill was introduced in the state legislature and passed by a majority of Mobilians after a prior lawsuit represented that three commissioners elected at large did not equally represent all the citizens of Mobile. The Zogby Bill then formed a mayor council form of government and that seven council members would each be elected by their fellow residents in the prescribed district boundaries they live in. The mayor, of course, is elected at large by all citizens. The Zogby Bill outlines a specific separation of power between the mayor and council. One council member may not negotiate, or any council member may not negotiate or enter the city into any type of agreement. The council members cannot direct city employees or unilaterally demand city services. The mayor may negotiate agreements, even in private, but cannot enter into any agreement without the public deliberation of the whole council and the formal approval of at least five members of the Mobile City Council. The Zogby Bill directs the administration, including the mayor, to operate the city based on the legislative action of council. Let me repeat that. The Zogby Bill directs the administration, including the mayor, to operate the city based on legislative actions of the city council. The administration knows the Zogby Bill boundaries. Since a number of years ago, this same administration sued the council because they believed the council was overreaching and violating the Zogby Bill. Of, of interest, that suit was filed within hours of a council mayor retreat to discuss our differences. The lawsuit was settled, and to this day, I nor the public that I represent have any idea what the settlement included. The meetings to settle this suit was done on a Thursday at a time when I was on a planned vacation. So much for transparency in our city government. Now let's move to securing, quote, securing of an agreement on DIP. That is the main focus of my concerns today. Securing is the language that the mayor used in his nightly newsletter that he sent to thousands of citizens in Mobile. He made no mention in his newsletter that the agreement required a public and formal discussion and vote by the council. Mayor Simpson did, however, reassure us by telling us to sleep tight and signed his name. It was after reading his newsletter that I sent my colleagues an email that ultimately was released to the public by another colleague on the council. Let me make this clear for full disclosure, that I was made aware by uh, the mayor's chief of staff, Jimmy Barber, regarding the plan to secure space and move a police precinct to DIP. He had stepped into my office briefly last Tuesday to let me know this and to give me this heads up. I told Mr. Barber that I looked forward to the specifics of the plan at our council meeting. I have the utmost respect for Mr. Barber and all the first responders in our city. In the, in the mayor's defense, some may call what the mayor did only a photo op. Some may even call it a, this, this secured agreement was ceremonial or just a called press conference as part of the city's five-year strategic plan for public safety. If so, why weren't other council members invited to this public event that included the press 
and only Councilman Small? Why hasn't the mayor discussed their strategic safety plan with the representative of this district or any other council district? Has this been discussed with other council members? If there is a strategic safety plan, why has this not been bought before the council to discuss in committee? Mr. Mayor, if there's a strategic plan, does it include closing the precinct on Virginia or adding others? When I read a few months ago that the mayor discussed with the Chamber of Commerce his strategic plan for the city, I asked by email that he communicate his plan with me. I've not heard of it yet, and I've not been informed of his plan. Again, so much for transparency. I've asked publicly how city projects are prioritized, but I've received no answer. I've asked for a city organizational chart, but again, no answer. Mr. Mayor, I've never had to take down a door to proclaim transparency. My door is always open. The mayor publicly stated he was dismayed with my concern that he appeared to enter into an agreement publicly without the approval of council. I have a responsibility to the thousands of people I represent to uphold the Zogby Bill and make certain the administration arm of the city government fulfills its responsibility by administering and not legislating. To become more than a rubber stamp to an overreaching administration that has the power to perform the daily operations is scary. What's to prevent an administration from punishing a council member that doesn't automatically do or vote as told? One wonders if that is why certain council members are not included in administrative discussions or not invited to public events or their projects are put on hold for years or bypassed by other projects elsewhere. The Zogby Bill was initiated to prevent favoritism or misrepresentation from ever happening again. My job is clearly defined as much as is the administrative arm of this government. I respect both sides of the aisle. The purpose is for check and balance and includes the need for transparency at all times. What I'm expressing today is indeed political action, no doubt, but it's not political theater. To make light of this is to sell our citizens short. I will and have in the past called out this behavior as it is something that will not sustain our city and will, if left unchecked, leave damage in its wake. When the current mayor met with me shortly after he was elected, he told me that everything that I had been trying to let people know regarding past administration expenditures was very much appropriate and right. I hope that the same mayor will take into account that what I'm saying today has equal merit. I hope this administration will respect the separations of power for the good of the city. Just as important, this administration needs to recognize that the council, not the mayor, ultimately decides what initiatives are implemented in the city. This requires open and transparent communication with all district representatives. I represent the people in District 6 until the next elected representative is in place. God help us if whomever is elected to serve on this council is nothing more than a rubber stamp of the administration, regardless of who will be the next mayor. Thank you. Mr. President. And I would like that read to the record, and I'll give you a copy. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Richards. I, I agree with Ms. Rich 100%. And I did um, publish a letter. Uh, I'm guilty of that. I, I did. Um, I am chairman of the council's public safety committee. No one whispered one word to me about 
a new precinct. Not one. What I read was that the contract had already been signed. That's what I read. I didn't read nothing about ceremony. All of that came up once a flag was raised and the word ceremonial was raised. What I read was that the contract had been consummated. And according to Zogby Act, only the council can consummate a contract. Only the council can consummate a contract. But let me just say this, regarding the strategic plan, and I intend to hold a public safety committee meeting so we can all find out about the strategic plan. I hope something is in the street strategic plan regarding citizens in District 1 up Moffitt Road. We had a police present at Sheldon Beach Road in Moffitt Road. I want you to phantom in your mind Moffitt Road and I-65. The citizens living west on Moffitt Road and I-65, their precinct is almost in the jurisdiction on Airport Boulevard. The precinct is not only on the Airport Boulevard, it's at the airport. It's one block from the airport. The people living on Moffitt Road and I-65 Want something in that street to plan to address those citizens over there? It's too far. As a matter of fact, that precinct is almost in the jurisdiction. Look like me, we're trying to help the jurisdiction. We're not trying to help those people in District 1. We're trying to make sure we respond to the people in the jurisdiction because that's where it's located. We need a strategic plan to re-evaluate that I'm not opposed to the precinct coming over to uh, Councilman Small's district because I want one coming to, to the people over there of Moffitt Road. All those citizens living up uh, and all those neighbors up of Moffitt Road, they got to come from Airport Boulevard. That's all I got to say. Mr. Davis. Uh, Mr. President, I have to admit that I am perplexed and surprised at my colleague Mr. Richardson's comments about the fact that the police precinct is on Airport Boulevard next to the western end of the city's limits. We had an opportunity. to extend the right to vote to people in the police jurisdiction as to whether they wanted to come into the city. The right to vote, which would have added net revenue to the city. So we could have more police officers and more firefighters and more precincts. And that effort was defeated. Mr. Richardson voted against it. Then, then, I put forward an ordinance which over a period of time would have withdrawn police and fire protection from the jurisdiction and moved those police and firefighters back into the city so that we would have increased response times and more resources within the city Mr. Richardson opposed that. So I find it, as I say, perplexing and surprising that now we hear that he objects to having a precinct at that location and providing those services to people in the jurisdiction. Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. Richardson. Thank you, Mr. President. I want you to follow me one more time. I want you to get on uh, it's not when when um, 
from Cody Road ends, what, what we got? Sally, Sally Road. Where's John Mead at, at Sally Road and Cottage Hill Road? And I want you to stay on Sally Road until you get to Tillman's Corner, until it ends. You follow me on, on Sally because that was part of what we were trying to annex now. When you go down Sally Road, you got houses worth a million dollars in those neighborhoods down there. You got houses worth a half million dollars in that neighborhood, two or three miles. The most beautiful homes in the city of Mobile. You know how much retail is on that street? Not one. City and I could collect a dime from down there. It's all houses. And when you annex, if the property you annex can't pay for the services that you got to render, leave it alone. Put your try at that. Get on, get on 45. Stay on 45 until you go under 158, almost to Citronel, and see what the printed budget is. You know why? There is no retail over there. What Joe trying to do is just like the, the matador. Trying to get the boy to run, he put that flag, you're trying to wave that flag at me, I'm not running. I'm not running. It's a formula for annexation. The revenue that bring in the city got to be strong enough to pay for the service. We can't pick up our own trash and you talking about bringing in 15 to 20,000 more people. We tell them folks to haul your trash to the park. You think I'm Rip Van Wanker, I'm not asleep? No. The only reason that precinct is sitting out there on the edge because we, we had already planned the annex. Trying to fool me that it's plenty of money out there. Ain't no money out there. Go to the biggest street out there with the biggest houses. Solid road. And find me a drugstore, find me a convenience store, find me a Circle K, find me anything, not one. No, we don't make no money off Everloren. Everloren is going to the county. Good morning, Mr. President. I'll, I'll rest my case, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President. Ms. Gregor. Not to belabor all of this, which is beginning to sound like a uh, debate for uh, some candidates here, but um, uh, just a couple of things. The precinct out on airport, I believe a lot of us were on the council when that happened, and it was moved out there under a former administration because of the location and the jurisdiction, because that's where so many of the calls are coming from, and it was more of a generalized location. It also houses the fire department. So it was looked at as the best move at the time to be able to address all of those calls from that area as well as from the areas more eastward of the airport. So it was done for that reason, as I recall. Um, didn't realize this was getting into an annexation debate, would rather not get into that, but as we all know, what happened with the annexation, and always when we look at annexation, we look at revenues versus um, money going in, money going out. And during the last annexations that were approved, that the council allowed to happen and were approved, always retail is drawn in. We want to make sure that we are able to provide those services. So I'm not going to get into a debate on that now, but and didn't realize any of us were getting into a debate on that today over um, what is going on with the police precinct in Councilman Small's district. And I believe the councilman explained everything very well. And uh, it's something that is needed. It is not approved until we approve it here on the council. We all know that. So um, something that is good is coming up in the district for the people he represents as well as the city as a whole. Whatever confusion happened over who was invited, who was not invited, that sort of thing. I think the good is what we need to be looking at and not criticizing um, maybe some sort of a lack of communication if that happened at all, but Councilman Small, I think, explained it very well, and I appreciate his bringing that to our attention. Mr. President. Mr. Mr. Woods. So thank you, Mr. President. So I want to focus on two different things. Um, 
there's there's this notion that there's somehow um, some legal issue in a ceremonial signing. I want to clear that up. That's not. Um, the Zogby Act is silent on any such ceremonial signing. That's, that's what we're talking about. But even if you actually execute a document, it is always subject to council approval. I um, want to clear up some things that have been said that were not based in fact or law as well. Um, you know, specifically, it's the Zogby Act, not the Zogby Bill. A bill is something that hasn't become law yet. The law is fully enforceable. It's the Act. And number one, the, the powers of the mayor are delineated in 1144C37. Specifically states what those powers are. Powers of the council are delineated in 1144C21, and it puts restrictions on, on those powers. Um, the Zogby Act creates co-equal branches of government. We have to act in concert. It's okay to debate. It's okay to have discourse. It's even okay to disagree, but it has us always acting in concert. There are certain actions that will not happen without the mayor and the council working together. I think that's why we see so much strife. Um, but the acts of the mayor's office under section 37 are not driven by a legislative agenda. And the council also gets to act freely. Um, I want to make sure that we remember that the police strategic plan for geographically centralizing our precincts, which ori originally disseminated back in 2013 to this council. And, and I want to thank Councilman, Councilwoman Gregory for mentioning that that airport boulevard uh, precinct didn't happen under this administration. Um, I also want to thank Councilman Small for all of his engagement. Um, he was very involved and has been pressing this issue about moving that precinct to DIP. I think you can probably remember that it came up, interestingly enough, that this annexation conversation came back, back up. That is when it came up. Um, and Councilman Small was very, very dedicated, even then, to making sure that DIP had that precinct so that the citizens of District 3, his district, the one he so aptly represents, could have the same access that people in District 6 have to a centralized precinct. Um, to the extent we talk about the council's uh, ability to, to ask and go through inquiry, that's always on the table. We're more than willing to answer your questions if those questions are based in fact. Some questions we just can't answer. Uh, but going back to the key point, the, um, the contract on the agenda or the lease on the agenda does not have a signature on it. And that's a reason for that because this is subject to council approval. It's subject to council debate. And all of those things are totally permissible. But to somehow, some way, state that the Zogby Act prevents the mayor from holding the press conference along with Councilman Small and them announcing an agenda and their intentions to put a precinct that is centrally located in line with the strategic plan, somehow that is not a legal act. It is not based in fact or law. And so I want to clarify that for the council, for the citizens, for anyone listening. Um, and to the extent that the council is going to ask me as your city attorney or the council attorney to enforce everything that is in Zogby Act, we are more than willing to do so. We are more than willing to do so. Thank you. What, what's the legal term for securing an agreement? So if you look in Black's Law Dictionary, you, talk, you can talk about securing in two different ways. You can talk about secured assets or actually gaining or actually taking. But you have to base it in fact. So securing, securing means that we're attempting to secure, basically. That's, that's what we're talking about. So back this up, two things. One, we haven't paid any money, haven't paid any money for that building. And there is no lease right now until you all vote on it. So what I expect to happen is that Councilman Small will continue to lobby for a precinct in District 3, and then we will go forward with probably another week of laying over, and then certain council members will abstain out of principle, and that's okay, because nobody can force you to vote or not vote. But I'm sure Councilman Small and the mayor are both asking you for a vote to be able to procure this building and to secure a lease. But until you all vote on it, it is not legally binding. And that's that. Also, when 
I was told after the letter that I wrote to my colleagues about my concerns about learning about securing an agreement and having council members learning about it through a mayor's newsletter or maybe the next day in the press, that there was um, a strategic plan. And you're saying it goes back to 2013. Yes. So is that plan completed? Councilwoman, the, if you remember back uh, when, after being appointed as police chief, I disseminated to all the council as well as the police department a strategic plan. It was dated October 2013. In that was the geographic relocation of precinct, centralizing them within the geographical areas. My main focus at the time was precinct two, which was actually in precinct four. And so that having been completed, the attention then turned toward precinct one and getting it centralized. So even though it wasn't specific on precinct one, and up 2013 strategic plan has been executed, but we continue along those same ideas of getting our precincts geographically located, centralized within the precincts they operate. So um, since there is reference that council district six has a centralized location, it's split. Precincts are not geographically located by district. They're geographically located. So there are seven districts, but there are only four precincts, main geographical precincts, and then a central precinct downtown. Right. And so when I say geographically centralized, I mean in the quadrant in which they exist. So if you look at the city of Mobile as northeast, southeast, northwest, and southwest, those are the quadrants that the city has divided and mainly runs along um, I-65's corridor and then down the Cottage Hill Road corridor. So when I say geographically centralized, I'm not talking about a district, but rather the precincts right, but geographical It was misunderstood area. then, because it isn't a district facility. It's meant as a citywide response to policing public safety. Correct. Correct. It is not yeah. a district. Right. Facility. I never understood it otherwise. The, um, I do believe that if we're talking about a strategic plan, um, I would like to see what is projected for the five years, it, because we're well past 2013, you said it's been implemented, correct? That's correct, yeah, the 2013 has okay. been implemented. Um, if, if the city uh, administration and public safety, I know that the old fire station at uh, 22 is due to be uh, renovated and, and in, because it's got the flat roof, a lot of problems similar to 18. And it's not, it's out, I think, until like 2024. We saw a chart from, from Mr. DeLapp and he asked us, would we use our CIP funds? Be that what it may, I wish that this city would look at the old Brunos on University and Airport. And it's been empty for seven years and it would be a great facility for firefighting, for a police, you know, perhaps a police presence, even a city magic, whatever that's called where you can pay your bills or after you've been in trouble with the public safety and also a rec center for youth it, it really truly could be a hub for the, for that area and that would be for five six and seven actually it would be a great facility so I'll put that out there as part of your five-year plan there was another question you had about the more strategic plan that had to do with the public safety complex and yes. we hope to have you a rendering, I'm hoping, within a month or two. And that's the one that would be at the Howell Johnson? Is that the one? Correct. Is it on that location, or is it going to move? The original geotech survey is to do it on that location, not being ideal, but because it's going to cost a lot more to do it because of the geography. Right. But the, um, it is city-owned property, and so those renderings are in the process right now. Uh, and we do hope to have that completed within 30 to 60 days. Is that going to be a fire station too, did you say? It will, it will include the- um, 23? The one at Airport and Sage. Yeah, 23. Uh, as well as the fire headquarters, police headquarters, and all the criminal investigations from the police department. Is that central now for, for a fire? The, correct, the um, fire command is at central. Right, so that would all move out to your to one, bigger facility? Yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. It's good. Let, Keep the council informed. It would be great. Mr. President. Mr. Richardson. <clears throat> I'd like to clear something up 
regarding the police precinct on the airport boulevard near the airport. When Mass Simpson took over, that was a fire station. We, that wasn't, it was built for a fire station. What happened, the fire, fire department came to us and said that they, were, they was losing patience trying to fight that traffic going west and that it would be better for, the, for everybody if they built the fire station for the west because they could come east easier. So they, that's how they got that fire station built out there. So if, if uh, what's an emergency service, somebody's life was on the line, they could easily get with them, get to them quicker trying to go east than they would fighting that traffic going west. Later on, the idea came up, why don't we move the police out there? Let's, let's take the police, put them in that fire station too. That came later. That was not the original idea. The original idea was to build a fire station out there. And then later on, the police moved out there. I think they were in the park. I, believe it may have, I don't know where they were. But anyway, no, they was on Moffat Road and Sheldon Beach Road. That's where they were. And they moved from there over to the fire station. That's what happened. Mr. President. Yes. The um, original concept design after the annexation of the airport property was to, to create, in the annexation of the airport in, Ch in Schillinger Road corridor, was to put a fire in police precinct out at the airport location. You are correct in that precinct four was originally located um, on Moffat at Shelton Beach. The, what they created originally, if y'all recall, was a precinct five. In the 2013 plan that we just referenced was to consolidate five and four and then use the facility that was built for precinct five at the airport as precinct four because it already existed as a police precinct. The original police precinct five was actually a commercial trailer that was on that same property until they could build it. So the design and concept was always to create a police precinct at um, Airport Boulevard. Uh, any further discussion on this particular item? Well, I, I think we pretty well have, have talked it out. Uh, you know, we've got campaign signs on the outside. Let's try hard not to bring them here on the inside, is all I'm asking. Uh, we, we, between here and August the 24th, we got 69 days to, to make it with one another, and I believe we can do it. <laughs> I absolutely believe we can do it. And I'm hopeful, again, signs, banners, all that, campaign headquarters, outside. But let's stick to the business and the agenda of this council, hopefully, uh, as we move forward. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, I don't even know where we are at this point. <laughs> Madam Ma City Clerk, what number are we on? Um, we're, we're ready to move to 6456. Approval award a special bonus to the officer of the month um, for May, Roderick Miles. 60, 457, 458, and 459 are approving settlement agreements and release of claims. Call for public hearings. 41460, call for public hearing to consider the vacation of a seven and a half drainage and utility easement in Mont Lamar Office Park subdivision scheduled July 20th. 41461, call for public hearing to consider the vacation of a portion of Pearl Street, Lyon Street, Hospital Street, and um, Basil Street, scheduled for July 20th. Announcements. I have a question going back to those settlements. We normally have executive sessions. Have, have we discussed these? No. I know you, you can't, can't do it publicly. You can. You can have an executive session if you if you like. Did, did you already do that with these particular ones? We normally. That's why I'm saying. Absolutely not. Um, but you are more than welcome to have an executive session. Mr. Arledge, like. in his summary, discussed the details of the settlements. In his summary of the agenda. 
the details. I would heavily encourage you all not to wait on these. Heavily. So you want them today? Yes. So I need to look at his summary. Okay, that's it, good knowledge, isn't it? Any, right any other announcements? Yes, sir. I'd like to, I just need to ask on that. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Ms. Rich, um, for, for, for asking that question, because if they do need to be passed today, then, uh, then uh, well, maybe we should have known that yesterday. Or no, no, you don't have to pass them today. I'd like them today, but I would suggest that you all not delay on these in particular. So if you're going to hold them over for a week, that's, I don't have a problem with that. But you don't want to delay any more than that. Okay, I understand. Um, and, and if Mr. Chairman, if you, or Mr. President, if you'll allow me, I, I tried to get the answer through texts and emails. Uh, there's still a lot of confusion of where to go to get the most up-to-date trash pickup information. And my, I, I think everybody shares it up here. There's a lot of big piles of trash. Um, so where do we get the most? Because people are looking at the, the nightly broadcast, searching the website. We need to erase the 15 places and go to one. That's my recommendation. And would you please address it? Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it goes out in the, the night new newsletter. It's located on all of our social media channels and it's put on our website daily. We place all of the information out uh, consistently on all of our channels to make sure that we can get the biggest reach and frequency to make sure that everyone has the same information. Um, it, is, it is posted daily with the okay. same information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, one other thing to follow up on that. Uh, because it's the first meeting since uh, we've had the good news that all six of the uh, trash trucks were delivered uh, late Friday um, and have begun to be put into use, uh, in addition to the three additional straight body trucks that we had also uh, ordered. Two of those have been delivered, so we have the assets now to be able to get ourselves back on schedule. And as of yesterday, they were on Monday South, uh, which yesterday was Monday, which is good. And I believe they are finishing that up this morning and on to Tuesday. So we're uh, working to get back on the schedule as quickly as possible. Mr. President, since we're talking about trash, I do want to uh, let you know that I have seen in, in my district at any rate uh, trash being picked up. I don't know who necessarily did it because I didn't see the trucks, but the evidence is there that the trash has been picked up in many of my neighborhoods, and I know everyone is very grateful for that. Um, once we get to where we are caught up, we want to work with you all to make sure that we get the information out to everybody about when people need to start really truly adhering to that 48 hour rule and not putting their trash out early because the city then will start going back to fining and uh, we just want to make sure everybody knows that well ahead of time because you know it's been kind of confusing lately with being behind and people able to put their trash on the curb and leave it there for you know, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it's taken. So just as soon as we get there, we just want to make sure to promote it and publicize it as best we can. We'll make sure we do that. Um, but we, we uh, want to get back onto that uh, as soon as possible and, and actually would ask that they continue to follow whatever the, the schedule is that's posted or information that we put out for that 48-hour rule as we would normally do. That way it's, it's, just, it's just confusing because we're behind. And so having people not knowing when the trash people will show up. It just gets confusing for folks. And so I think once we do catch up, we'll be able to really make it easier for them to understand, you know, these are the rules and we will be, you know, finding people if you don't adhere to the rules, you know. So just as soon as we get there, we'll all help promote that information. But having the trash picked up, uh, it was really good to see. Um, so happy that we're catching up. Mr. President, uh, in light of the fact that we have uh, some new trash trucks on board, would that still be a need to uh, have private contractors picking up trash? We still have one mobilized to assist until we get fully back on schedule. 
how long you expect that to be? I'm sorry? How long do you expect that to be before you are fully online? Well, as I said, we, yesterday we, it was Monday, and we were on Monday South, uh, and we're moving to Tuesday today uh, on Tuesday. So we'll just see how it goes because there was an, enough of a buildup over time and because they really had one pickup instead of two last month. We don't know exactly what the numbers look like. It'll take us a few days to figure that out to see exactly how long it'll take and what kind of assets we'll need to have to be able to make that happen. For example, if folks have much larger piles than they would normally have out there because maybe they didn't have two pickups, we just need to know that volume because that slows us down to be able to get it collected. That's why we're going to keep that additional contractor on board until we get fully caught up. All right. Mr. President. Mr. Dave. I'd just like to advise my colleagues. I, I talked to uh, uh, President Manzi uh, late yesterday evening and advised him that I have another meeting I'm going to have to attend uh, that requires my attendance. And so I'm going to be leaving here a little after 1130. I just want to let everybody know that. Thank you. I know y'all are going to just be heartbroken when I leave at 1130, but I have to do it anyway.